Fingerprints at a crime scene are often useful evidence in criminal cases and sometimes can be the only evidence for a conviction. However, care must be taken not to assume that every fingerprint found at a crime scene was deposited by the offender. In the case I'm going to tell you about, a prosecution was pursued against a local man whose fingerprints were found on a security gate inside this tower block. It was alleged his prints were on the gate because he tried to break through it to get into a flat on the fourth floor. After I examined the evidence, however, it became fairly obvious that this was impossible. Not only did my examination show that his fingerprints were not placed during the offence, it showed that he may not have ever even been inside this tower block. This is the security gate. It was fixed to the wall across the front door of the flat. The man who lived there was inside when he suddenly heard loud banging coming from the door. He opened it and saw a masked man with a metal tool hitting the bolts that fixed the gate to the wall. The offender saw the occupant and ran off. Damage was caused to the wall here and the gate's lock here. No other damage was caused to the gate and it remained locked throughout the incident. The police were called and a CSI attended. He found a palm print on the vertical part of the gate here and three fingerprints on the top horizontal bar here. As you can see, both sets of prints were in areas away from the damage. The CSI photographed the position of the prints, recovered them in a sellotape lift and sent them to the fingerprint bureau for comparison. A computer search resulted in the palm and fingerprints being identified to a local man. The man was arrested and interviewed. He denied ever having been to that address and also said he could not recall handling such a metal grill at any time. He was charged with burglary and his solicitor asked me to examine the evidence. I compared the palm print and the fingerprints and agreed that they had been correctly identified. Considering the man's defence was that he had never entered that block of flats or touched such a metal grill in the past, his defence at this stage appeared very weak. However, when I carried out a more detailed forensic examination, I made a very interesting observation. Although it would have been fairly easy for the man to leave his palm print on the gate, it simply pointed to the left like this, the man's three fingerprints were almost impossible to achieve. Let me explain further. This is the lift from the top bar of the gate containing the three adjacent prints. Not only are the tips of the fingers present, so are the middle sections of the fingers and the creases between them. The three prints are consistent with being placed in a single contact by the man's right hand. The important evidence here is their relative position to each other. If he touched the gate with his hand flat like this, his right middle finger would be higher than his right ring finger, which would be significantly higher than his right little. The prints in the lift, however, show that his right ring finger is the highest of the three, with the right little only slightly below it. These are exactly the type of prints that are deposited when a person curls their fingers onto a surface like this. Although not impossible, this type of contact with the gate would be very awkward and difficult to achieve. It would likely involve the man having to curl his fingers onto the gate and place his elbow through the bars just to get his fingers anywhere close to the same position. When I examined the gate, I noticed that the defendant's finger and palm prints were still on it. Further examination showed that these prints actually continued onto the underside of the bar and its rear face. The presence of these prints show that, far from the man simply having contact with just the front face of the bar, as shown in this picture, he had gripped three faces of the bar at the same time, like this. For the man to grip the top of the two metre high gate with his arm coming down like this was not just awkward or difficult to achieve in the circumstances alleged. It was impossible. These continuation prints on the underside and rear face of the bar had not been recovered by the CSI and there were more unrecovered prints on the same bar but nearer the hinge side. I compared these prints and found that they were also from the same man. They were fitting with him curling his fingers from his left hand around the bar. When considering all these prints together, my findings indicated that the man had held the gate in both hands like this possibly whilst carrying it by the top edge with another person carrying it by the bottom edge. This could only have happened at a time before the gate was attached to the wall. All the prints remaining on the gate from the man were very robust and appeared to be formed in the paint, indicating that he had held the gate at a time when the paint was new and not fully set. Further inquiries revealed, about 10 years ago, the man had done some work experience in the workshop of a local metal fabricator. 
part of his duties involved helping to move metal gates. The victim, the person who lived in the flat, was asked when the gate had been fitted across the door to his flat. He explained that he randomly picked a local metal fabricator out of the yellow pages who then supplied and fitted it. He said he did this about 10 years ago. In summary, my findings showed that the man had handled the gate 10 years ago at a time when it was basically portable. The gate was erected across the front door of the flat and his prints remained on it for 10 years, only being found once a different part of the gate had been damaged during a crime. As the gate was now effectively a permanent part of the building, the evidence initially appeared to demonstrate that, at the very least, the man had been inside the tower block. Ultimately, of course, it did not. Eventually, the prosecution dropped the case. But this got me thinking, how lucky was this man? If you remember at the start, I explained that there was also a palm print that was quite easy to place. What if, ten years ago in the workshop, the man only left this palm print and not the fingerprints that were later impossible to reconstruct? Would he have been convicted of this offence, considering that he said he had never even been into the building? I leave you with this thought. What did you touch ten years ago? If the police asked, could you remember? Did you touch anything when it was in one place, but since then it has been moved somewhere else? A place that later turned out to be a crime scene? If you could give an explanation, would it be believed? Or would it simply sound too far-fetched to be true? Perhaps just to be on the safe side, just don't touch anything, ever. But. If your fingerprints are ever found at a crime scene, give us a call.